This is my review of the Beach Boys album Holland. It was released in 1973 and produced by the Beach Boys. So this, uh, this album I have the copy of on the CD with uh, Carl and the Passions, the twofer, and um, I also have it on vinyl. I didn't get the CD down this time just because the vinyl is more impressive anyway. It's bigger, you can see the cover. I really like this album cover. I think it's one of my favorite uh, Beach Boys album covers. So this album, actually, I, I think last week when I did Carl and the Passions, I, I wasn't sure if that was if Bruce was on that album or not. I guess he was on that album, so this is their first album without Bruce Johnston since um, I can't remember when, whenever it was that he first started appearing on albums uh, in the 60s. Um, and this is their, their second and last studio album with uh, Blondie and Ricky in the band. This is also the last studio album where uh, Carl was like the, the leader of the band. And it's also the last studio album with Jack Riley. So uh, this this album, I think a lot of people see as like the last uh, the last kind of great Beach Boys album or the last good Beach Boys album that uh, studio album that they did. I think it's definitely one of the last ones. I'm gonna say it's the last one where they tried something completely new and kind of were going in a in a new direction with, with the band. But it's definitely one of the last ones where they where they kind of did that. Uh, and it's, it's definitely an album that, like Carl and the Passions before, it doesn't sound a lot like your kind of classic, typical Beach Boys album. Uh, this one, and, and that one I think, this one I think has a little bit less involvement from Brian even than the last one did, but both albums with not a lot of uh, involvement from Brian. Uh, although the first song on this album, Sail on Sailor, is a song by Brian um, and Van Dyke Parks and like a bunch of other people uh, co-wrote it. But I don't think that the song was originally intended for the album. I think that when the record company heard the album, they weren't happy with it, so they kind of demanded that the band um, get something else on it, another Brian song. And so this is what they uh, came up with. And uh, it's, it's a good song to open the album. Uh, sung by Blondie. Uh, and I, I think it's a really cool, good, good opening track. They played it, uh, played it live when I saw them in 2012, so that was pretty cool. And I, um, I forgot to mention, I think that this album is called Holland because it was actually recorded in Holland. Uh, I think it was Jack Riley's idea, but the band basically moved to Holland, like they moved the recording studio and everything, and went and recorded this album. And I think it cost them like a bunch of money, so it was probably like a horrible, horrible idea. Um, and I, I can't remember if that's why they fired Jack Riley or not, but I think that's... Uh, that like kind of the stuff around this album probably has to do with why this is this is his last album as their manager. Um, I can't remember exactly. It's been a long time since I've like read any any books on the Beach Boys story. Um, but anyway, uh, the second the second song, Steamboat, uh, Dennis song, uh, sung by Carl, and it's a really cool song. It took me a long time to get into. It's like got like a steamboat engine sound kind of going on in the background. Some really cool like slide guitar stuff, really cool vocals. It's just a cool song, but it's kind of got this like weird dreamy vibe, and it's not like super catchy. But once you get into like the whole mood of it, it's it's super cool. But it just took me a while to get into it, kind of appreciate it. Um, the third song is part of this big kind of like three song epic that's like kind of stuck in the. Uh, well, not really middle, kind of like beginning, middle of the album. Uh, the California Saga, it's mostly like by Brian and, and or not Brian, I mean uh, Mike and Al. And this first song actually, California Saga, Big Sur, um, is actually a Mike Love song, which kind of kind of surprised me. I had always thought that it, it was an Al song for some reason, and it's actually my favorite song on the album. And... Um, Kind of, kind of blew my mind tonight when I was reading this and realized it was a Mike Love song. I was like, "Wow!" Um, so I, it's crazy that like he could he could contribute something as bad as student demonstration time on, on Surf's Up, and then come up with this song here. That's I uh, just such a, a good song. I think everything about it, like lyric, I love the lyrics, the the singing from Mike. Uh, I think it has a great vocal melody. Just a a really great song. Um, so I 
Mike did have, I think, talent. Um, just, I don't know. So, as, as, as much as I disagree with some of the, like, personal choices of, of Mike Love the person, um, he's definitely responsible for, them, for some songs that I like, um, but also some that I really, really dislike. Um, the, the fourth, fourth song, uh, California Saga, The Beaks of Eagles, is kind of a poem thing that, like, I think Al took a poem and then wrote some, some song parts on it. So it's got, like, some spoken parts by Mike and Al, and then Al does some singing parts. It's kind of the, the weakest part, I think, of the, of the three-part piece, but I, I like it, and I enjoy listening to it in, the, like, the context of all three of them, I think, on its own. Not so much, but in the context of the three other songs, I enjoy it. Uh, and then the fifth and final part of the California saga, um, just called California, uh, it was by Al. Brian sings like the little song or like the line on the intro, like the first first vocal part, and that's like I think like one of the only things he does on this album really. Um, but Al sings the rest. And another song I really like. Um, another one that they, they played, actually, the only other one I, that they played off this album when I saw them live uh, in 2012, so that was pretty cool. Um, that was definitely kind of a, a highlight for me hearing that song because I, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, the sixth song, Trader, a song by Carl and Jack Riley, sung by Carl. Uh, probably, probably my second favorite song on the album, another one I really like. Um, they were still doing like the kind of political lyrics and stuff, so this one's about like, um, I don't know, like imperialism or something, but it's, uh, it's, it's a good song. Um, Catchy got a really great vocal from Carl, um, one, of, one of my favorite uh, Carl songs. The uh, seventh song, Leaving This Town, uh, sung Ricky and Blondie song that the other guys kind of, I think, helped write a little bit of. Um, but it, it's a good song, kind of similar to what they did on Carl and the Passions. This one I think is a little bit weaker than, than those two were, but still a pretty good song, not bad. Um, not my favorite song on the album, but also not, not a bad song uh, by any means. The eighth song, Only With You, um, another Dennis song, uh, also sung by Carl. This one has uh, lyrics by Mike, which is kind of crazy that him and Dennis worked together because they did not really like each other from what I understand. Um, and it, it's a good song. Um, this, I, I kind of like another version better. There's a, a version that, I think it's a bonus track on the, the Dennis Wilson solo album that I have. Um, and it has Dennis on vocal, and I like that version a little bit better because this sort of, I think, feel like Carl's vocal just kind of makes the song a little too, I don't, I don't know, Dennis's vocal is rougher, but kind of Carl's vocal makes the song a little too, too like, sappy, and I just say it, I think it works a little bit better with Dennis's vocal. But this version's fine, and I think it works great on the album. And then the, the ninth and final track, Funky Pretty, a song by Brian Jack Riley. It's it's kind of a weird song. I don't really know what to. I, I read a review once where they just the reviewer said that it's neither funky or pretty, and that's yeah, pretty much true. Uh, I mean, I like it, but it's it's a it's a pretty weird song. Which uh, Brian was in kind of doing strange things at the time. I feel like, um, but it's it's a good way to close the album, and I think. Uh, Holland as a whole, I would give it a 5 out of 5, another one uh, that I just really love. I uh, think it's a great album. Um, I don't think it's their last great album, but I can see why some people would kind of say that. Uh, just a really cool album. And uh, it also comes with this fairy tale thing. Um, Mount Vernon and Fairway, I think is what it's called, um, that Brian was writing at the time. Um, it's about a, a magic transistor radio. It's really weird. I've only listened to it like um, 
I think all, like the full thing all the way through I've only listened to like once. And I didn't listen to it tonight when I was reviewing this because I decided I'm, I'm not going to review that in its own because it's just kind of, it's really weird. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, Holland, 5 out of 5, definitely should check it out, but it doesn't sound a lot like a typical Beach Boys album.